Welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy, and this is day three of the Five Days Easter 2020 collaboration that is hosted by Kara Branding Creations and Dear Julie Julie. You can find both of them on Facebook and on YouTube, and I will have links to them and to all the other ladies that are taking part in this collaboration. So for day three, we have, let me set this aside, we have these uh, items to work with. And these are rough cut. Um, you may remember that, sorry for all the ums, my brain's not working today. I am really having some fibro fog going on. So we'll just see what happens. Anyway, if you'll remember, I had two sets of prints for each of the days because my printer decided I needed more. And thus far, I have used all of each of the two sets in what I've created. However, this one has a bunch of little bitty pieces, so I separated them out into two separate sets. And these are the pieces that we have to work with today. We have this postcard that says Easter Greetings. We have more of the stamps. We have a bunch of little labels and tickets. I don't know if you can see them. I hope you can. You'll see them. Whoops, my light went out. Let's try this. It either went out or I forgot to turn it on. How about that? So there, you can see the multiple little labels and tickets. We have another butterfly, that blue butterfly and another library card. I kind of wish this was bigger and I tried making it bigger and it just becomes a blurry blob. So it'll stay that size. We have this little girl. She's sitting down and I think she's Miss Muffet maybe because she's sitting down on a little raised area and she's got a bowl of something in front of her. I don't know, that's what she looks like to me. These two little chicks coming out of the same egg we have some advertising labels. We have this and it's three little bunnies and it looks like a basket with roses and forget-me-nots. There's a lot of forget-me-nots in this and that will come into play here later. We've got these two tags with the bunnies on them. This little image with the chick and more forget-me-nots and roses. This oval image with the butterfly here. I think it's supposed to be an egg, like one of those eggs that, it reminds me of the eggs that this part would be cut out and this would be on the back side of the egg. It would be on a stand, you would look into the egg to see the image. I may have to make a play on that. We've got this large collage page with chicks roses and it's on a ledger sheet. And then we have these two pink tags. Now I did go ahead and cut out, fussy cut out the other set of all the pieces. And I'm going to start with this because I am going to make an Easter journal. And thus far, things that I've made can be put in it or not be put in it. They can be completely separate. Today I'm gonna to work on making some stuff for the pages. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And I really like this. I think it's, I, I love the chicks. The baby chicks are adorable. And I want to make a page, what would you call it? You just slide it on there, a page slide. And so I want to put this on here and it's just slightly too big but I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on there, lining up these corners, and then I'll cut off what is uh, hanging over. Actually, I won't line up the corners. I'll line up the top and the bottom. That way I don't lose so much of either end. It helps if you put glue on the smaller piece because then you're not trying to cut 
a bigger piece off that's been glued. Gums up your scissors, makes everything sticky. And I wish I could always remember that. I just happened to remember it in time this time. And like I said, I'm going to line up the top and I'm going to try to center it so that what I cut off the edges is not much of the image at all. I do like that it just happened to be exactly the same height as this other paper. All right, so there's the first part of this. And I went looking through my die cuts because I wanted to do a little something here. And I found this one, and I think it goes really well because we've got the roses that are in the corner, and so this just kind of builds on those roses. However, it does have the white edge on the side, so I am going to get my ink out and another sheet of paper since I have glue on that one. And I'm going to go ahead and ink around the edges of this. I don't, I'm not going to ink this yet because I don't know what I'm doing over here yet. Thus far in this whole project, I have had wings on my butt <laughs> because I have just flown by the seat of my pants on all these projects. This is the only one that I came into with half an idea of what I was doing simply because I knew that I needed to work on some pages for the journal. I will close this and I'll get this side over here. All right, and I can set that to the side for a moment while I do this one. Actually, this is really shiny. So I am going to take knock some of that shine off. I'm going to do that with this nail file. And this one has two sides. This one has a 240 grit. This one has a 320 grit. This is the finer grit. And I just want to knock the shine back. So I'm just going to age it up a little bit by hitting it with this nail file. Fairly gently, but not real gently because the picture is so faded that the flowers actually will go with it a little bit better. Or at least I think it does. Now, we'll get some of this vintage photo. And I'm going to knock some of it off. And I am going to not only go over the edges, but I'm going to go over the entire thing so I can get some of it in that sanded area. That way it doesn't just look like somebody's hit it with a sanding block, but it looks actually aged. See how it looks much better when I knock that white back that was exposed when I sanded it? There. I like that. I don't always have to do vintage. I like to mix up my styles, but I have trouble Mixing the two together, which I'm having to do. Sorry, I have to clean this off. All the sanding left little rough pieces over here. Where was I? Oh, I don't usually mix the two styles. I do vintage and I do brights. I do all different kinds of styles. I don't like to be locked into one specific genre. I know that some people have favorites. 
even in the styles that I, even in the journals that I make. And that's fine. And I'm not trying to please everybody with making all kinds of things. I'm just trying to please myself making all kinds of things. I have discovered that if I'm trying to please somebody else with what I'm making, I have a hard, hard time just being pleased with it myself. I always wonder if I'm living up to their expectations. And that's a hard thing to do. All right, I'm going to set that right into the corner. Now look, I love that. I think that turned out so pretty. Okay, look at me. I'm getting excited. I did take my medicine this morning, but sometimes ADHD just overrides everything else, even with medication. All right, so there is the front of that flap thus far. It may not be done. It may be done. I don't know. Let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, I wanted to make a tag from this. And I need to combine the two different uh, kits. I think I think this is from Julie's kit. It's that style. And I am going to go ahead and glue this on the front after I use some of the saltwater taffy ink around the edges. I did use my scallop punch on it like I did the other day when I made the bookmark and it leaves white on the edges. So that's the vintage oxide brush. Make sure I grab the right ink brush. I just think this saltwater taffy is a perfect, perfect pink for this kit or for this challenge. I don't know because it's, it's two different kits and it's actually multiple different kits that are very different between the makers. But this, <laughs> this saltwater taffy goes well with both of them. And I think that's just, that's just fun. Let's see, that's a little extra. Whoops. Now I left white because I tore off the bump. And now there's the opposite of a bump. There's a divot. All right. And I want to glue this on here, but I think I want something behind it. So I'm going to get over here into my scrap bin and see what I've got. This is my ribbon jar. Ooh. Well, that might be it. This is my scraps jar for ribbons and strings and, and such. And, ooh, that purple might go well because there's a lot of purple in this kit, too. I'm just going to pull this one out for later use because it won't go with that part. I'm not even sure it'll go with anything today. But it does go with some of the other things in the kit. Oh, there's a pair, piece of pink lace right there. I see some pink eyelash trim like the purple that I just pulled out. Let's see, there's some blue on there. I don't know if I'll find any blue that I like that goes with it, but who knows? Oh, I'll pull that out because that might go with another part of the kit. I rarely throw things away. It has to be so small that it's unusable and unusable is in the eye of the creator. Creator, the beholder, whichever way you want to say it. There's some yellow in the kit, so I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to put this in there just because of some of the roses, although I doubt I use it because it's really dark. Let's see, that's more peach, and there's not really any peach. Let's see. I think I, think I can work with what I've got pulled out. I also have a jar like that of scrap fabric pieces, and I have a basket of scrap paper pieces, and I have all of my larger scrap paper pieces organized into pouches, and I have <laughs> all of my uh, 
inch or less long skinny scraps. It's, I have, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ridiculous. All right, so I'm going to set these to the side real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and ink this because I know that I'm going to want that to be, to have all these white edges covered up. I don't know why inking the edges is called distressing because to me it doesn't look distressed at all. I think it just adds a layer. So you probably won't hear me refer to inking as distressing the edges unless I'm using something, an ink that I intend, like if I'm using black soot to make something look burnt on the edges, then I might say I'm distressing it, although I doubt it. I'm probably just going to say I'm inking it. Okay. You know what? This is a tag. I need to punch a hole, too. And I will need to make some reinforcers for that. Forgot to take that one out from the last time I used it. Okie doke. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on there as well before I get too far into this. And these are just scraps from previous days of the kit. I am trying to use everything and not waste anything. Plus, then I know that it goes very well. There we go. All right, so we've got that part. Now I need to decide what I want to do behind the bunnies or around the bunnies or whatever. Do I want to do this at the top? Yes, I like that. Don't know if I need, I don't know if I need that under there or not. Let's see what it looks like. Nope, it just disappears. All right, do I want this there or do I want it up here at the top? I think I like it better at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. Oops, not upside down. Ooh, that was close. Get that centered on there. And then I'm going to glue my pin to myself and to everything else, apparently. I'm going to go, where do I want that to stop and start? We'll start on this one and we'll go up to that one. All right, and this tag, I think I am going to have it open at the bottom and I'll slide something up in that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the top part closed.
Now, do I want to do anything on the back? Yes, I think I do. Let's see what we've got. And I can't remember. I know this is Julie's kit. I think these are Julie. This makes it kind of hard whenever you forget to separate them out to um, know which kit belongs to which person. Let's see, now we've got this, but I have a different plan for that. And this, I have a different plan for it. And this, I have a different plan for it. Hmm. Okay, so maybe we want to do this. Maybe we just want to add one of these bunnies to here. And since there's a little blue on the front, we'll add one of the blue labels down here, I think, or maybe here. I think that this is Julie's. This may be Julie's. Okie doke. So let's go ahead and glue this on there so I can quit being wishy-washy about the whole thing. I should have inked that before I put it down because there's a little bit of white showing where I didn't quite get close enough when cutting it out. All right, now I'm going to take one of these labels and I think I'm going to do the blue because I think I'm going to put that butterfly on at the top and that'll carry the blue from one end to the other. And for this one, I'm just going to hit the edges with the brown. The bunny is brown, so I think knocking this back just a little bit is a good idea. And I keep mixing up my glue pad or my glue paper and my inking paper. And I'm going to cause myself issues. Yeah, I think that works. I am, however, since he's on. I, some of my stuff didn't print on the heavier paper that I usually use, some of it printed on regular. Uh, printer paper I like this particular group that I'm working with right now so I'm either having to back it or make sure I glue the whole thing down just to make sure that it doesn't tear so easily he looks really flat hmm. I'm not so sure about that we'll find out we'll see what happens all right, so let's go ahead and get this through here. I don't hate it. I think that that helps because the back of this is so, so flat. Um, you know what? I have some stickles. Or not stickles. Liquid pearls. How is that going to... How will that affect it? Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to use the liquid pearls. I have here... And some of you may think this is strange, but I have this jar 
that I use whenever I'm using my metallic watercolors. And I just, I don't ever wash it out. And I also have just a little bit of a holographic glue in there as well that I just always keep water in this jar and I can always add some sparkle. So let's see if this works on this butterfly's wings. Give him just a little interest. I don't want to put too much because I don't want my print to run. I don't want my colors to run. So, and we'll see when he dries if that did anything for it. All right, set that aside. Now I still have this that I somehow got glue on. And I think I pulled out some other things that I have been um, drawing from. And I was so excited. I just got this yesterday. It's eggs and little peeps. So I may use that in this journal somewhere. I got this in the mail. It's a coupon book from a grocery store, but I thought, oh, perfect timing. So I may use this in the journal. I think that it's actually just the right size. I may have to cut off like a quarter of an inch. Let's see. And then I went through some of my ephemera. Now this is some of, this is ribbon I've already used. You've seen that. But I have game cards from an Uncle Wiggly game. This is like a board game from 1940 something. And Uncle Wiggly is a rabbit. And so I pulled some cards out that I'm going to use throughout here. I have this Wisconsin Eggs card, and it's the candling card, which is how they judge an egg's uh, freshness, size, quality, all of that. So I've got these things that I'm going to put into the journal. But what I was grabbing over there for from my extras was this pile here. I see a crocus, and I'm not sure what that flower is, but I've seen a lot of forget-me-nots in here. And so I pulled some of my forget-me-nots out. I have these other die cuts, and this, this that I cut from a magazine a long time ago. Let's see, but I had, I for some reason, just the forget-me-nots are what grabbed me. So let's see. I may just make this a cluster to put at the bottom of the page. If I can figure out how I want to do it. This will be a really good page topper, as will this. So I'm going to set them aside. See, these are probably too big for this particular item here. Maybe. Hmm. It's kind of hard to make a cluster without the page. <laughs> I didn't, I've never really tried to do that before. Do that and that. And I can do this. Put that there, and I'm put this piece of lace. I am terrible at making clusters, by the way. Uh, my friend Kathleen is amazing at it. So if you want to see how to make a cluster, a really good cluster, I suggest going and checking her out, and I'll link her below. I'm trying. Every time she posts something that's making clusters, I make sure that I watch it. Because I just want to get good at it, and it's kind of hard for me. 
I think that'll be a good cluster though. So I am going to, well, I can't take a picture of it because I'm using my phone to record. So I am just going to try this. I'm going to try gluing from the top down. I've seen somebody recommend doing that. Oh, you know what? I think just to get a little bit more green in this since my label is green. I'm going to take some of these that I have sitting over here from a previous video. I like that. I don't know, is that too much for a cluster? I like it. I think it works. We'll find out. I'm going to scoot those over to the side because now I'm probably going to use those elsewhere in the journal. Now I'm going to try to glue this together without ruining it. All right, so that's all glued. Now let's get, oops, that wasn't supposed to go down yet. Let's get this in here. There we go. So I need glue on these. Those four. One, sorry, one, two, three, four. Just a little bit of glue on these guys. I'm not worried about that excess glue right there because I can rub it off after it dries. And then I had this one. I know it wasn't going that way the first time, but I think I want it to go this way. So I need to put glue on the fronts of those leaves and the stem. And I'm going to put glue on these th two leaves. Even if I didn't have the camera going, I would still be talking to myself about just as much as I am now. All right. I like that. Do like that. 
All right, so there's a cluster. I'm gonna set that to the side so that all that glue can dry. Now I still have these pieces and these pieces. This one I'm gonna save. I'm not gonna do it today because it'll take too long. I do know exactly what I'm doing with it though. Can I just tell you that bunny gives me the creeps? I can't figure out what to do with him. Just don't know. Just don't know. Okay. So I have these other pieces that I pulled out and they can go over here. All right, so let's do something on the back side of this since it's going to be a page hugger or whatever it's called. Let's go ahead and do something with it. Ooh. That would be a nice pocket, and if I can find some lace, I think I have some lace like this, I could run that across there. So I am going to... I'm going to back this because it's on that weak paper on some of my other paper. So let's see which, ooh, I think the wine dyed paper looks, looks better with that. And so I'll just do this. All right, I'm gonna go look and see if I've got lace. But I do have eyelet and I've got some lace that I thought was kind of similar. Of course, it's gonna be covered up, so I guess it doesn't, well, yeah, it's gonna be covered up, so I guess whichever one I like the best on there is gonna be the one that goes. That's too big. I got this two yards for 49 cents on one of my trips to the Emporium. Oh, now that's about perfect. Okay. And yeah, that one's not gonna work. So let's go with this one. I'm going to trim that end off a little straighter. It's got kind of a chunk. Let's see, do I want this to go across the whole page or just the pocket? Let's see what it looks like. I didn't cut that bottom very straight. Straighten that up just a little bit. Normally I would have pulled out my big old clunky paper cutter. But I was trying to not. <laughs> Still not very straight. Hmm. That's better. All right. So I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna take it the whole page. What's it look like on the other side? Should I just wrap the whole thing? Let's see what that looks like. It's going to be right about here on this side. All right, are we ready? see what it looks like on the other side no I don't like it on the other side so it'll just go on this side and I think 
I like to follow the curve. I think I'd like to follow the curve, I should say, on this one. I don't always, but sometimes I do. So I need to cut that right there. All right, so I'm gonna glue this one down first. Turn it sideways so that I can line it up a little better. All right, and now I'm going to put glue on here. One spot wants to flip under, so I may just have to uh, glue it if it doesn't behave. <laughs> All right. Now I covered up some of my forget-me-nots. So I may... And then I need to get part of Kara's stuff, which, <laughs> oh my goodness, like I said, I can't remember whose is what's. Yeah, I could make a card. Yep, I could do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down so I don't forget what I'm doing. And now I'll get into some of the extra things from other parts of the kit. Yep, I think that'll work. All right, this is from the Spring Journal Pages and Tags kit. So I'm gonna trim this down. And this one printed on the little bit thicker paper, so I do not have to back yet. I go in there easily. Yep. Yep. And I'm not going to punch a hole in the top because this is going to sit right up here. You won't even see the hole or see the card really once it's in the pocket. So I am going to get, let's see, I want to make sure that that's straight, and I'm going to get pencil out here and draw a line where I want my glue to be. Wow, I'm really having trouble drawing this line. And then, let's see, this is gonna go down in here how far? Okay, and so I wanna line across. It's kinda of sticky there. I wanna line across here, but I don't want glue. 
so that it can slide over the front of the pocket. So let me just ink this real quick. This is where I want the glue. And I got a little bit of glue outside of the line, so I'll have to rub it off. And see, I had that line there, and I put a ton of glue on that anyway, because I, I was like, well, I need to make sure that holds down. Silly me. All right, that's cute. I like that. All right, and so that's going to set aside to dry. We're going to take this one. I'm going to hit the edges real quick on this. Uh, forget me not just to knock it back just a bit and I think I'm going to get some pop dots out because that is very dimensional um, eyelet right there And I just want one right there, I think. Will that work? Hmm. I don't think that's thick enough. I may have to put, I may have to layer two of them. Because these are rather thin dots. So we'll just make a dot sandwich. And then I just need a little bit of one on that stem. So I'm going to take one of these that has come off and I'm going to cut a very small strip. I tell you what, I'm having a rough time today. <laughs> Put that right there. Right. And we'll peel the backing off of both of them and then pop it down. Should have gotten that, but I can do that real quick. At least. I don't like that. Okie doke. So we can put this in here, and it gives us some journaling space, but then there's also journaling space that's still behind it on the lined paper. Let's see, we've got this and I need to make a little card. Little card to go in there or I could just stick. I think I'll put my Wisconsin eggs right there. Yep, that works. Okay, so there's that. I don't have anything on the inside. Oh, what can I do on the inside? Yeah. 
it kind of feels like cheating to just put her down like that. Does that work? Because then that still leaves lots of writing space. We can do that. That was just a little vintage, just to give interest. I think so. All right, so she was down after this, right? Yes. So I need to glue this one first. There, and then I can glue her. Pop this down. That's cute. Oh, okay. So we have left this and this, which I purposely set this aside for another project. I'm still trying to figure out how to use that one. I need to go ahead and get this video finished though. And got this. So I wonder Can I just make this collage? in another one of these. Alrighty, so this is going down first. I'm just hitting some of the spots. I'm not trying to get the whole thing because part of it's going to be held down with the um, these <laughs> that I have no longer on the screen. There we go. All right. So let's get this down first. All right. Now, the way I had these, I had this one, 
and that one was on it and this one was on it I don't even remember how I had it now. So we'll just be doing what happens. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see. Let's see what happens. Put that down there. I'll just hit this real quick with something. Just because it has a white edge there. I'll hit it with both of them. How about that? This one was next. And it was, I think, right about there. This was somewhere. Is it right there? That seems to work anyway for me. Alright, so I need just a little bit of glue now that I know where I need it. Right here. didn't use a stamp for the I feel like I'd be forcing the issue and I'm already feeling like I'm forcing the issue so these are going to be the parts that I did not use today I have a plan for this these obviously can be used anywhere because they're labels and they're stamps I got to figure this thing out I don't know why it's just a thing that red-eyed bunny just gives me the creeps. You know what? I'm going to blame it on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We'll just do that. So that's what's left. And here, let me move some things out of the way. We made a page mm, a hugger. I don't know. An edge thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out. It's a page for my journal. This pocket comes out. It's a journaling card. Okay. And then on the inside, we've got these two little clusters. I'm going to have to go back and get all that excess glue off with my glue eraser. And then here, we've got a tuck made from these roses, and we used this, this image here. So that's the page edge corner hugger thing. <laughs> and we made, we made, I made this tag. I did not make 
the uh, part that's going to go up into it yet because I think that what I want to go up in there is on another day. But I've got this little collage here that I cut out with my scallop punch, added this trim with the roses, and on the back I've got the bunny with the label, and I did, I do like the butterfly now, although he leaked a little bit here because I was a little too watery. But can you see the shimmer? Well, I can, so it works. And I tied that with the eyelash fringe, and then I made a cluster to go on a page in the journal whenever I get it to the point that it's ready. And there we go. There is day three of the hashtag five days Easter 2020. Look below in the description and you can find links to all the others that are participating in this. Join us if you'd like because also included in the description are Links to the Etsy shops of Kara and Julie, where you can find all of these kits. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that I hope that you got something out of it other than realizing that I'm a little bit crazy. And I just want to remind you, as always, be kind. Bye.